Hey everyone, in the news this week, Australian cricketing legend Shane Warne passed away, so perhaps it'll be his ashes that the team will be playing for later this summer. Sorry, that's in poor taste, he must be spinning in his grave. Get it, because he's a spin bowler. London is still looking for a new head of police after Cressida Dick's forced resignation. London, of course, has an ever-increasing problem with knife crime, and the government want a new commissioner to take a stab at it. And TV show Neighbours is to finally end after 37 years on air. The show's theme tune famously talks about how everyone needs good neighbours. And I guess that brings us on to the week's main news story, which is how Ukraine has a particularly bad set of neighbours, at least to its north and its east. Let's just hope that Romania has no plans to erect a Leolanda bush along its Ukrainian border, thus blocking out the evening sun. This week saw further escalation of the conflict, and for a scary couple of hours there were worries that a nuclear power plant being shelled might turn into something a dozen times worse than Chernobyl. Subsequent investigations have apparently ruled everything's okay, although I was frankly unsure whether it was a good or a bad thing that the plant got a quote glowing report. It is quite remarkable how fast the situation has escalated. A few weeks ago Russia had quote no plans to occupy Ukraine and now they occupy half of Ukraine. It certainly shows that civil servants can do policy change and process paperwork when they really need to. Not in the UK mind though and Boris given some credit had chosen to turn down this opportunity to get his name in the history books when it comes to the war. Though he has been through the wars himself metaphorically speaking of late and he did of course remember to take the opportunity to use the bad news about a potential nuclear meltdown to cover up the shameful nepotism of giving Gavin Williams a knighthood. If Russia has an autocracy we've got a Wallyocracy, it seems. Sir, maybe seriously bad at his job. Anyway, elsewhere, France and Germany have stayed out of the conflict too, and Lufthansa have stopped flying passenger planes anywhere near the region, although perhaps the Luftwaffe will be flying planes to Ukraine instead on the basis that they still have a lot of unfinished business in the region. So what next? Well, here's one way to ratchet down attention I thought of. Maybe the Prime Minister could phone up the Kremlin and point out that Putin could save $350 million a week if he pulled out of Ukraine. Actually, you know, perhaps not. If it was Boris that told me, he'd probably not believe it this time around. Anyway, see you next week. Please like, like, subscribe.